Hello, this is the Chart Profit video, Friday 22nd of January, about two hours into the trading day. This from the pre-open, looking at the E-mini S&P. This line here representing 1870, which is the major time support for the E-mini. And on Wednesday this week we saw uh, a new low for the decline, uh, which saw a test of the 2015 low. Did attract some buying. We closed uh, strong for the day. Following day, with Thursday, we saw uh, price at 1870 kind of accepted, having previously been on the previous day resistance here. I said on Thursday, bulls would want to see the E mini back above this level as quickly as possible, and I want to see a minimum of effective buying marked above 1870, that point of control, before considering the long side on any time frame. So here we are on the live chart. There's that dip below the uh, time support at 1870 down to test the 2015 low uh, and today at the end of this week we are managing currently to hold above that level I don't know where we'll be by the time we close today at the end of this week I'm hoping we can hold this level and here's the equivalent chart the spider that we're looking at here here's the 187 level and again hoping we can print some time above this level been deeply oversold by all sorts of measures down here, which we'll talk about in a second. I also see this chart, the diamonds, as uh, really important. If we manage to hold above the levels on the previous two charts I've just described, uh, the first test for the market, should we rally into next week, would be this uh, major level here, 164, on the diamonds. So this should be significant resistance, and that would be a longer term kind of test for the market. Price back up here would be well, a much more sort of comfortable situation. So those, I think, are the significant key levels next week. Talked about the oversold levels. This is the uh, market chart for New York, the breadth indicators, and all three of our daily breadth indicators, as you can see, in deeply oversold territory down here. The pulse chart still looks uh, very negative. The breadth here still red. The momentum negative and still heading down. Again, deeply oversold here. First sign I'm looking for of any kind of strength is significant buying marked on the E-mini above that level we just talked about, 1870. So if we look back to October, that would be kind of something like this. You'd then want to see the uh, price momentum at least turning higher and seeing some green coming in on the breadth. And as you can see, we're a long way from that at the moment. That's why I say on any time frame, looking for significant buying, first of all, on the profile. Let's look at the sentiment uh, here from pre-open. My version of the Rydex assets ratio, as we know, reached 9.17 on the 29th of December, which I think was a four-month high at that point. The market's obviously been down from there. Historically, that's a really high number. Uh, and that ratio has fallen now really quickly down to 3.5 and that's as low as the ratio has been for two years except for the sell-off late last year when the ratio fell to three which was over here in October and we looked at this last week these indicators above um, this red line here representing the change in the indicator below from a 50-day high and you can see we're down about 60 percent now from this point here which we reached uh, just at the just before the sell-off in the market. Found it useful at the extremes to look at the total assets in the Rydex funds that I follow. Low level low levels of assets as a total bull and bear seem to coincide with market lows, as you can see here. Uh, last week when we looked at this, we were sort of up here somewhere, and we've now fallen down below that level which I marked last week, which means there is now fuel for a rally. These being contrarian indicators, I hasten to add, most importantly, are the levels I mentioned at the top of this video and price relative to that. If we look at bear funds in isolation, uh, you can see here that we've just exceeded uh, the previous peak, so we're now at a multi-month high for bear fund assets. A lot of money flowing in over the last few days. And this is the bull fund assets in isolation. I'm actually showing you here the graphic that we looked at last week. This was the previous week last week's video uh, and we said that this level and that I drew in at the bottom here seems to represent bull fund assets at 
a low enough level that we can say they correspond to um, previous correction lows which represented at that point when I showed you the chart 6% from a 50 day high and I said well we haven't quite got there yet and if I just update that chart you can see that we now actually have got there so money coming out of the bull fund assets seems like they're flowing into the bear fund assets so there is some real fear in this indicator at least frankly would have seen or prefer to have seen the VIX that we're looking at in the bottom here uh, we did get above 30 thought we might have seen uh, at a market low like this if that in fact is a bottom there um, just more of a kind of capitulation spike in the VIX we came off uh, a low over here of about 15 so it doubled nothing like the panic we saw back in August over here looking at the public poll from AAII Bulls percent actually came in slightly higher this week at 21.5. Uh, we're remembering that the previous week the bulls percentage hit 17.9, which was the lowest since April 2005. It's almost 11 years ago. But bears percent this week was also higher, 48.7%. That's the highest since April 2013. So uh, from a contrarian perspective, I'd say that was pretty significant. Investors intelligence, uh, bulls percent lower at 26.8, that's a 16 week low. And bears percent, that rose to 36.1%, that's the highest since 2011. You can see the four week moving average here of net bulls minus bears nearly as low as it was back here uh, at the previous low in the market here. And Lippa US fund flows reported equity fund including ETF outflows of 5.2 billion this week and as we know the four week flow for a while now has been uh, relatively historically very low okay the UK FTSE 100 index has just closed glad to see that it has closed back above 5870 which is the major uh, time level um, we'd seen quite a test it's been quite a bit lower this week but we've seen a strong rally the last couple of days and we have in fact closed back above that level if I just switch that to a weekly chart, you can actually see that we've closed higher for the week now, which didn't seem very likely earlier in the week. Another interesting chart is the German DAX. We have this big level here at 93.07, uh, which has not yet been broken. Uh, very close in August, again, late September, and we're here. Um, interesting, as you know, I've shown you this before. From this high to this low, uh, we saw uh, in November, early December, this test above the 12 month up here. But then the really negative pattern was that exact lower high at the halfway point before we saw the collapse. But we're back at this major support, so this is a significant chart to watch. Uh, hopefully, we're looking at some kind of triple bottom pattern here. But we don't know that. Uh, one thing for certain, as far as I'm concerned, is that if we see price breaking below that support, that three time support, uh, that would be a really uh, poor weak signal. It would certainly indicate further weakness, I think. Okay, now we will remind ourselves what the uh, bonds chart, the TLT uh, chart looks like. Um, we've been looking at IEF recently, just as a more appropriate chart, but this one is interesting. Just to remind you, this level here remains the major point of control. And we saw these tests down here, middle of last year. We rallied off that to this halfway point, just a spiky test above it. We've been below it ever since, um, but the 12 month emerged in here to 121.40 and this is a stronger price location we're up from there now we've tested this week above that halfway point and that has just currently been rejected and this is interesting because if we look back at a daily price distribution from 2011 for TLT that halfway point from this high to this low that we just looked at corresponds very closely to the value area high and what we've seen here is just a, well currently a rejected probe just above that level now what can happen in a situation like this is complete rejection uh, or very often what happens is we'll see uh, price back down around something like 123, 122 in here and if you look to the left this kind of price uh, may become interesting with time so time spent over here would possibly lift this point of control up to this level 
when that point of control shifts, very likely the value area higher would migrate higher as well. And often that releases the possibility of higher prices. So we may stall here at least, I think, on this chart. But we have the possibility of this major down here migrating up to here somewhere, up to that 12 month. And uh, on IEF, the 7 to 10 ETF, um, again, looking at the longer term price distribution from the daily back to 2011, uh, the major point of control comes in here at 105. And looking at this distribution across this range, this level here, and you can see it's been rejecting price right across the last few months, indicating we're still in this in this distribution. Price accepting, uh, oh sorry, price being accepted above that level uh, would indicate we're in something new. Just from the shape, I don't think that's going to happen. But again, price around this level, just below 107. And we may see this point of control migrate higher. It's something to watch out for and monitor. We've seen uh, a new low for oil this week, uh, just a couple of days ago, but we have rallied really strongly from that point. Looking here on the weekly chart, we can see how far we've come. I'm just wondering now if we should be looking at the possibility, we'll look for um, evidence off this low that this is in fact uh, a major low, a major bottom for oil. Haven't said that uh, at all. I think possibly just looking at uh, a lot of it's anecdotal, just comment and the really negative uh, sentiment to oil. And it's just time I think we should consider the possibility that this week actually might have marked something significant. If you remember the last rally back in August, uh, we were plotting this level here. And looking for price to hold above that certainly didn't. We had kind of that instead. So we were looking at the halfway off the low. And we should be doing that again here. As you know, I watched the ETF USO uh, very closely. And this level below 8. Just interesting uh, from long-term distribution point of view. So I'm looking at the possibility of this being a significant low. And I will be looking for... Some minor signs of strength coming off that low. Now, commodity prices, oil, for instance, uh, tend to be negatively uh, correlated to the dollar index. So, uh, somewhat confusingly, I'm also looking for strength in this chart, which is the dollar index. chart itself looks uh, pretty positive. Um, we see uh, back in November a probe above the March high. Um, but the chart has rallied back up, the index has rallied back up. We're now sitting above the halfway point off that high. So this is a strong price location. And if price can hold above that point, uh, my target is up here, just below 103. And that would, of course, imply weakness in this chart, the Euro FX chart. Levels uh, as marked, uh, this 12-month point of control at 113.40. This is the level I showed you last week, and we talked about the possibility of time in here actually migrating that level lower. Now, that has actually happened. So the 12 month has migrated down uh, to this level just above 109, just with the time in the past few days. So we're now in a really weak price location for this chart, which gives me some evidence of that stronger dollar index and the likelihood of a retest of uh, last year's low has increased because of that. Price back above uh, this level next week puts that in doubt, but I would still be expecting it until we see price manage to get back above this halfway point, and that would reintroduce the possibility of this opponent control migrating higher. Currently, I'm expecting weakness in this chart, so if we stay below this level, uh, going into next week, the more time we spend below there, uh, the more, I think, the chance of weakness. So possibility of a stronger dollar once again. Okay, I think they are the most important charts. So I'm going to conclude there. Uh, one last look at the spider. Approaching three hours into the trading day now. Let's just uh, hope that the spider and these important charts can hold above these levels. So 187, I think, the key level going into next week. Okay, that concludes. Once again, I wish you a good weekend and thank you for watching.